Hey everyone, Pastor BJ here coming to you from Kirkmont Church. As we continue to move through the various traits of the early church, one of the things that emerges, particularly in Acts chapter 2, is this idea of corporate worship. In verses 46 and 47, the scriptures tell us this. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. So there's just this general sense that worship and praising was a part of the everyday life of the church. But it says in particular that they attended the temple together. They corporately worshiped at the temple. Now, this is important for us to recognize because worship in the modern world is something that people don't take nearly as seriously as the early church did in many ways. Now, of course, here they're attending the temple. And as we move from the old covenant into the new, and particularly after the year 70 when the temple is destroyed, Christian worship became an exclusive Lord's Day Sunday worship that they gathered, they sang songs, they opened the scriptures, they read them, they prayed together, they confessed their sins together, they proclaimed their beliefs together, they did all sorts of things together. And this is essential to what we do. Now again, there is a sense where our daily lives ought to be filled with praise before we eat. We should thank God for the food. Before we go to bed, we should praise Him for a good day. Before we travel, we ought to thank Him and pray that He would keep us safe. And there's just ought to be a general sense that the blessings of God are things that we should be grateful for and that the day-to-day -day life is something we should be praising God for. But I really think it's important that we draw our attention to corporate worship because we really do misunderstand this in the modern context. Ask yourself this, why do you go to church? I suspect some of you may go or may say, I really enjoy going to church because I get to see my friends there. And let me just tell you, that's beautiful. I enjoy seeing my friends that I haven't seen all week as well. Um, some of you may say, well, I really enjoy the worship music. The, the worship band or the, the choir is incredible to listen to. And yes and amen. I, I speak highly of that as well and enjoy it. Maybe you really like the preacher and the sermons that you hear are inspiring or educational. And so you really get get excited about that. There are a number of reasons that people might go to church. And if you notice all of the examples that I just used, all of them are focused on the self. I go to church to get something out of the service for myself. Now listen, there's nothing inherently wrong with getting something out of a worship service. We hope that all of you get something out of it and go home different. But it misunderstands the purpose of corporate worship. See, the picture that's painted sometimes is that the pastor or the worship leaders are performers giving something to the congregation. It's almost like a concert or a speech or a lecture or something like that. That's not the picture of worship in the Bible, and it's not even close. The picture of worship in the Bible is that we are actually the ones who are the performers, if you will. The, the congregation is the ones who are doing the performing, and it is God who is actually the audience. We are coming to unify our voices, to proclaim truths to God. We are there to corporately worship Him. And that distinction is hugely important. At the beginning of every one of our services here at Kirkmont, we do a call to worship. We read a psalm or we read a scripture that invites people to come and worship God. And I want you to see that that's crucial because it is the congregation themselves who are doing the worshiping, not, not the, the worship leaders worshiping in the presence of a congregation. It is God who is the one who is receiving that worship. And we see this in Psalm 22, where it paints this picture of God being enthroned on the praises of Israel. You have this congregation of people singing, proclaiming, crying out to God, and it's as if God is enthroned on top of that praise. And that's important because that picture of enthronement is really what matters when we think about worship. The only person who gets enthroned is the king. And when we think about corporate worship, I want us to think about us proclaiming Jesus is Lord.
the most basic belief of the Christian faith is that Jesus is king of the world. But I also want you to start thinking about corporate worship in this sense as well. You see, if we recognize that we are the ones who are worshiping God rather than receiving from some ordained worship leaders, we, we also have to recognize that God has given us that obligation for a reason. He is using it to accomplish something. And one of the things that the Bible makes very clear is that the church has a mission to accomplish on the earth. We, we call it the Great Commission. Go into all the world, preach the good news to all nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here's where we cannot separate corporate worship from the Great Commission. They are not two separate things. It's not as if we go out into the world and preach the good news, and then we kind of escape back to our corporate worship settings in church. Mm -mm. Corporate worship is the central weapon that God has given his church in order to accomplish that great commission. Think of it in warfare terms. In Psalm 110, the most quoted verse of the Old Testament in the New Testament says this, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. Here's, what's, here's what David is saying in this. The David, David is saying that his Lord, meaning the Messiah, meaning Christ, has, made a, has been made a promise that he will sit at God's right hand until all of the nations of the world are at his feet. He's a king. That's the same picture of God being enthroned upon our praises. And it says that he, that he will rule in the midst of his enemies. It says that he that his people will offer themselves freely. These are pictures of worship. It is pictures of us being in battle for our king. And this is, this is crucial. Corporate worship, weekly corporate worship, is the one weapon against which Satan has zero defenses. And this is important because oftentimes we treat corporate worship as sort of an afterthought. I mean, think about it. It's almost like the, the military unit going into battle and fighting for their king. And now think about that when we think about our excuses for not going, our excuses for not, not worshiping. Oh, I went to bed a little too late. I'm really tired. Sorry, God, I can't go defeat Satan for you. I can't go fight alongside my brothers and sisters to accomplish the mission because... I really need to get an early start on my travels this weekend. Or, gee, it really is a long day today. I probably should make sure I get extra rest. Now, now listen, I'm, I'm not trying to degrade anyone. I'm not trying to shame anyone or guilt anyone. Um, I know how difficult it is to get things together on Sunday at times. I have four children, and my wife and I realize it's a gargantuan effort to get those kids ready to church, looking nice and ready and on time. I understand all that. I'm a care pastor, and I work with folks all the time who have physical ailments, who sometimes have to plan their entire weekend around getting to church in order to make it happen. So I'm not insensitive to the difficulties that are there. But it is through those difficulties that I want you to fight so that you might get to church and worship. Not so you can have a good cup of coffee, but so that we can accomplish the mission of the church. Christ prayed, in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Worship is the way we accomplish that. And we will help answer that prayer that Christ gave by worshiping corporately. Go and be blessed in Jesus' name.